Welcome back. <clears throat> Happy July 8th, 2021. Well, now it makes sense why we haven't heard of the name of the officer who shot Ashley Babbitt. She, white and Trump supporter, unarmed, shot dead on January 6th. The only fatality in this violent or fatal insurrection, as the media and the Democrats keep announcing it. By the way, <clears throat> insurrection is a literal federal crime. It's codified in Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 2383, and it reads, quote, Whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof or gives aid or comfort thereto shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. Close quote. Guess how many protesters or rioters on January 6th have been arrested or charged with insurrection. Zero, zero, zero. That's right. Former attorney generals here in Arizona can write of the thousands who stormed the Capitol violently armed to try to overthrow the government. There weren't a thousand people who went into the Capitol that day. And not a single firearm or knife was confiscated. The only gun used was the one used to kill Ashley Babbitt, white, Trump supporter, unarmed. The current U.S. Attorney General of the United States, yes, U.S. Attorney General, said, quote, I have not seen a more dangerous threat to democracy than the invasion of the Capitol. He called the assault, quote, an attempt to interfere with the fundamental element of our democracy, a peaceful transfer of power, close quote. I wonder where he was on 9-11. wonder if he ever studied what Franklin Roosevelt did or Woodrow Wilson, both in rounding up people based on race or politics. Fundamental element of our, fundamental element of our democracy was interfered with, so much so that the House had to recess for something like maybe five hours. They were back at work that night. The two most common charges against those arrested and detained for January 6th are trespassing and disorderly conduct, both misdemeanors, meaning less than six months in jail. There are no felony charges against the vast bulk of the 400 plus people who have been charged with committing a crime that day. But back to Ashley Babbitt's killer, if I may recall, this is an unarmed woman shot from behind. If Ashley were black or liberal left, her name would be everywhere. People, in fact, would be shouting, say her name. The person who shot her would have been suspended, fired, or urged to resign and would be facing fel felony homicide charges right now. And his name would be everywhere, as Derek Chauvin's was. You might even see attorneys for Ashley holding daily press conferences that the cable news media would break into programming so as to cover. You'd probably have Kamala Harris visit the family. Joe Biden certainly would call them. But Ashley was the wrong kind of victim in the wrong time of our history. Someone forgot to teach Ashley in grade school that you have to be of the right race to get the same recognition, rights, and privileges as others when it comes to your assassination. And if you are white, white, that is not going to do it. Justice John Marshall Harlan, it turns out, was wrong. There is a caste system here, and it will turn us into a failed and tribalistic anarchy if we don't stop it. Even as well-informed uh, uh, as our cultural caste system that the left has erected is, and as well-informed about it as I am, I was continually surprised over the blasé attitude taken over Ashley Babbitt's shooting. Time was, even the guilty of the most egregious of, cri egregious of crimes had liberal defenders, be they right-wingers like Randy Weaver or murderers like the Tyson brothers here. Jerry Spence represented the first, Alan Dershowitz the second. All that's changed. Civil liberties and uniform, consistent application, single standards of law have been defenestrated by the left in America. 
First, it took over the ACLU, replacing the mission of defending civil liberties of any party so as to only defend the notion of equity and diversity. Not enough colleges, I guess, to do that. Surprised as I was, reading this morning made it all the more clear to me. Guess who the number one suspected gunman was that day on January 6th? Guess who the person is people see the most evidence for having shot Ashley Babbitt to death? Paul Sperry at Real Clear Investigations has the goods, the details, the facts, and the quotes. And it very much looks like a Capitol Police officer named Michael Byrd. The one thing about Michael Byrd I would almost never mention or notice, except for the odd and infractious and nonsense-making case of Ashley Babbitt's death, the one thing that's perhaps explanatory here is that Michael Byrd is a black man. A black officer shooting a white Trump supporter? Of course, that counters the entire narrative of the entirety of last year, certainly last summer. White cops shooting black innocents. And just as last summer needs to be forgotten, never mentioned, never brought up, memory hold, so too does Ashley Babbitt's death and her assailant. Or I should say her life, because that's what's being discounted here. Meanwhile, people who are sitting in jail in D.C. and Virginia for six months plus, who have been charged with nothing more than misdemeanor trespass, get the cold shoulder and ignored as well. Every law student at every D.C. law school, from Georgetown to American University to the D.C. College of Law, ought to be volunteering to defend these incarcerates based on the First, Fourth, and Fifth Amendments, seeking their release under habeas corpus or some other civil liberty argument. Each of these law schools has free clinics made up of students who do that for every other kind of criminal, including cop killers. But again, white and supportive of Trump, no civil liberties for you. No justice for you. Yeah, the soup Nazi analogy is apt here, and not because of the word soup. As Paul Sperry notes, in February, U.S. Capitol Police issued a press release promising to, quote, share additional information once the investigation is complete, close quote. But Justice Department investigators closed their probe in April, clearing officer of criminal wrongdoing in Babbitt's death, which the medical examiner ruled a homicide. And last month, the D.C. police, which shares jurisdiction with the Capitol Police, concluded its own internal review of the shooting without making any findings According to spokesman Kriskin and Metzger, still, United States Capitol Police continues, quote unquote, stonewalling the public, according to the head of the police union. Stonewalling the public on an insurrection. I suppose people will do what people will do. Do recall that was a legitimate justification for rioting and rioters who intimidated intimidated the Baltimore police enough so that they had to flee the scene they were dispatched to protect while buildings and statues were defaced and destroyed. That was the justification of Nancy Pelosi's last year when asked about it. People will do what people will do. How about this scene? I'm reading directly from the AP. Quote, After a night of chaotic clashes between police and protesters, violence erupted again in D.C.'s downtown, about five blocks from a presidential parade route. Dozens of protesters, some self-described anarchists, dressed in black, wearing masks, damaged businesses starting at 10.30 a.m., just before the president's ceremony for swearing in got underway. Authorities arrested 95 people, some charged with rioting, not trespass, rioting, in the Franklin Park area. And acting police chief Peter Newsom said, There was, quote, significant damage to several businesses. Two police officers suffered injuries as protesters threw bricks, trash cans, and other objects and ignited small fires. Despite the arrest, the demonstrations continued through the afternoon, and police used pepper spray and flashbang grenades to hold back the crowds, refusing to let people closer to the parade route. 5,000 National Guard members had to be brought in to quell the rioting, close quote. That wasn't January 6, 2011, or Inauguration Day 2021. It wasn't January 6, 2021. I'm sorry, that wasn't January 26, 2021, or Inauguration Day 2021. 
That was January 18th, 2017, the day of Donald Trump's inauguration, where the police had to use pepper spray and flashbang grenades to hold back rioters. Is that an interruption with the peaceful transition of power? Guess what? Six people were acquitted. And the Trump Justice Department, you know, the one riding roughshod over civil liberties and tyrannizing America, as Ilan, Ilan Omar put it, six were acquitted, and the rest, over 200, had their charges dropped, again, by the Trump Justice Department, which doesn't believe in civil liberties or civil rights. Dropped all the charges. That, by the way, was not considered an insurrection. The wrongs there against Republicans, cops, and Donald Trump were watered down, diminished, reduced, even ignored by the mainstream press and, of course, the Democrats, to the point where they are now sufficiently memory hold. And by watering down, diminishing, and reducing the death of Ashley Babbitt, we are watering down, diminishing, and reducing the importance of violence, death, life, and homicide. By saying certain lives don't matter as much as others or don't matter, we say certain deaths don't matter, and thus certain wrongs don't matter. Join the party, obtain a get-out-of-murder-free card, join the right race, an impossibility, obviously, going to the nature of the wrong of judging people by race, and you obtain a get-out-of-rioting-free card as well. But be white, be Republican, and rights and wrongs don't matter as much. You assume the risk for being an enemy of the state. Many of us know that term from Henrik Ibsen. Some know it from Shakespeare's Coriolanus. But it has a far worse pedigree, as the folks at Wikipedia point out. The term enemy of the people or enemy of the nation <clears throat> is a designation for the political or class opponents of the subgroup in power within a larger group. The term implies that by opposing the ruling subgroup, the enemies in question are acting against the larger group, for example, against society as a whole. It is similar to the notion of enemy of the state from Roman times, hostis publicus, typically translated as public enemy. The term in its enemy of the people form has been used for centuries. The Soviet Union made extensive use of the term in the 50s, notably by Stalin. It is routinely used by authoritarian leaders. The concept has wide-ranging use, usually used by left-wing tyrannies and authoritarians. It let the USSR criminalize dissent. And regarding the Nazi plan to relocate all Jews to Madagascar, the Nazi tabloid Der Sturmer wrote, quote, The Jews don't want to go to Madagascar. They cannot bear the climate. Jews are pests and disseminators of diseases. In whatever country they settle and spread themselves out, they produce the same effects as are produced in the human body by germs. In former times, sane people and sane leaders of the people made short shrift of the enemies of the people. They had them expelled or killed, close quote. That's what the Nazis thought was sanity. Now, what do you say about those who identify racial group habits or predilections as based on color? as Raytheon, Koch, and the Smithsonian have tried to do by urging whites to be less white and detailing to others the characteristics of white and black races when it comes to everything from work to play to family formation to religious belief. What an enemy of the people by Ebsen is the great discovery by the truth teller at the end, do you remember? It's that the strongest man in the world is he who stands most alone. Or as Shakespeare put it in Coriolanus, do not die voluptuously of surfeit when it comes to the defense of your country. Well, there's a lot of surfeit right now of all the wrong things, particularly a surfeit of Marxist-Leninism and idiocy. It starts with aping Marxist-Leninism and policy. It ends with its acceptance. That's why we're here. To avoid those ends, ideally, by informing you of their beginnings. I'm Seth Leibson. We'll be right back.